Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Giri Daridas and today we're coming to the end of our Gita Mahatmya series. This is going to be chapter 18. It's going to be a wonderful ending to this great Gita Mahatmya series. And of course, if you want to see the whole series, all you have to do is go to gitamahatmya.com. The link is here in the description of the video. It's free and available for all. Please share widely. So this is the last one. And this one starts a little differently. Now it's Parvati who directly asks um, Lord Shiva to continue. So it says like this, Parvati said, my dear husband, you have told me the glories of the 17th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Now kindly relate the glories of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Sri Shiva said, O daughter of the Himalayas, Parvati, please listen to the glories of the 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is higher than the Vedas and the giver of unlimited bliss. When it enters into one's years, it destroys all material desires. For the pure devotee, it is divine nectar. It is Sri Vishnu's very life, and it is a solace to the hearts of Sri Indra and the demigods, as well as the great yogis headed by Sanak and, Shanak and Sananda. One who recites it sends the messengers of Yamaraj far away. There is no other recitation which can so quickly destroy all sin and free one from the threefold miseries of this world. Now listen with great devotion. So it's already started great, right? Already such power has already been shared here. But now we're going to have a story demonstrating the special power of chapter 18. So listen to this. On the topmost peak of Mount Meru is Amaravati, which was built by Vishvakarma. So this is in the heavenly kingdoms. This is where Lord Indra lives. In that heavenly kingdom, Sri Indra, along with his wife Sachi, is served by the demigods. One day, while Sri Indra was sitting peacefully, he saw that a very beautiful person had arrived there, whom the servants of Sri Vishnu were serving. When Sri Indra saw that beautiful young person, he immediately fell from his throne to the ground. At that time, those demigods who had been worshipping Indra picked up the crown that he was wearing and placed it on the head of that new beautiful person. So she enters there having this great time in, in, in the heavenly kingdoms. Now, of course, remember, this is the heavenly earthly kingdoms, not the spiritual abode, not God's abode. These are the higher realms within this universe where the demigods, the nature gods dwell. So he's there enjoying his wonderful karma, and then all of a sudden, somebody else appears so beautiful, and he just falls from the throne, and they just like start worshiping this other person as Indra, because Indra is a position. It's like when we say the minister of health or the secretary of state. It's a position in the cosmic administration. So, after that, all the demigods and other denizens of the heavenly planets started to perform Arctic and sing wonderful songs to the new King Indra. The great rishis came there and offered their blessings and chanted Vedic mantras, and the Gandharvas and Apsars started to sing and dance joyfully. In this way, the new Indra who had not performed the usual 100 horse sacrifices, started to enjoy hundreds of different types of services rendered by the demigods and other denizens of the heavenly planets. When the old Indra saw this, he became very surprised. He started to think to himself, this person here has never built wells or dug coons, or planted trees for the welfare of others. And when there were droughts, he did not provide grains in charity. He never performed any fire sacrifices or great charities in holy places. 
So of course these are all ways of accumulating very good karma, the kind of great good karma you need to be able to be situated in the number one karmic slot of being King Indra. So he's like, this person didn't do any of these things. He had access to that person's record. He hasn't done any of these things. So how has he managed to attain my seat? The old Indra, feeling greatly disturbed in his mind, left to the ocean of milk to pray to Lord Vishnu. When he managed to obtain darshan of Sri Vishnu, he asked him, My dear Sri Vishnu, in the past, I performed many sacrifices and other pious activities for which I was installed as the king of heaven. But at this time, other, another person has come there and taken my place as the king of heaven. This person in his life never performed any great, wonderful, pious activities nor had he performed any great Vedic sacrifices. So how is it possible that he has managed to take my throne? At that time, Sri Vishnu said, My dear Indra, that great soul has performed the recitation daily of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Every day during his life, he recited five shlokas from this chapter. Just five verses. And because of that activity, he has attained the results of all sorts of pious activities and sacrifices, yajyas. And after enjoying many years as the king of heaven, he will attain my personal abode. If you perform the same activity of reciting the 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, you can also attain my abode. So this is what that person did. He only chanted five verses from the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. That's all he did. And because of that, he got so much good karma and liberation at the same time. He attained both amazingly good karma and moksha. He attained prema. He was going to go back, guaranteed return, back to the kingdom of God, the real transcendental liberation, final liberation. But before that, he gets to enjoy as King Indra, in heaven, just because of five verses a day, which you can usually do. After hearing Sri Vishnu's words, Sri Indra took the form of a Brahmana and went to the bank of the Godavari River, where he saw the town of Kaligrami, which is very sacred. In that place, the Supreme Sri, in his form known as Kalishva, resides. Close to this town, on the bank of the Godavari River, a very pure Brahmana was sitting, who was very merciful and had understood the topmost goal in secret of the Vedic literatures, the Vedanta. Daily he would sit at that spot and recite shlokas of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. When Sri Indra saw him, he became very happy. He immediately fell at his lotus feet and requested him to teach him the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. After Sri Indra had practiced the recitation of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita for some time, he managed to attain the topmost place of Vaikuntha. He, when he attained that place, he realized that the pleasures he had enjoyed as King Indra along with the demigods, was nothing in comparison. So that's a good, you know, they put that in there. It's important to remember that however wonderful the nature gods, you know, the, 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 the heavenly realms of this universe may sound, even the position of Indra at the top of the heavenly kingdom, even that is nothing compared, of course, to the joy of the kingdom of God. My dear Parvati, for this reason, the great sages especially chant this 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and by so doing very quickly attain 
the lotus feet of Sri Vishnu. So that's the story of the 18th chapter, but there's more now. For you who have been listening to the whole Gita Mahatmya, look what Lord Shiva has to say. Anyone who hears or studies this Gita Mahatmya very quickly destroys all sins which he has accumulated. And that person who remembers this discourse with great faith attains the results of all kinds of pious activities and great sacrifices. And after enjoying all worldly opulences, attains the abode of Sri Vishnu. Thus ends the glories of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita as spoken by Sri Shiva to Parvati Devi. So that's it. That's how it ends. Just by listening to the Gita Mahatmya series, which now you can listen to the whole series from chapters 1 to chapter 18, all on the GitaMahatmya.com. Just by hearing this Gita Mahatmya series, you too can attain um, the results of all kinds of pious activities and great sacrifice, enjoying great worldly opulences and then liberation, attaining the abode of Sri Vishnu, going back home, back to Godhead. So that said, of course, chapter 18 of the Bhagavad Gita is extremely important. It's a huge chapter, but there Krishna does kind of like a summary of everything he taught before to Arjuna. So very important information, great details about the three modes of material nature, which we saw in chapter 14. You get a beautiful explanation of the of the important things in the three modes, you know, happiness and, 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 and yagna. So you get a very important conclusion of the Gita, and then you get into the highest verses, the most important aspects of the Gita, the topmost philosophies presented at the end of the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. In, with culminating with Krishna just saying, please just shelter under me alone. Don't worry about anything else. Do not fear, I will take care of everything because I love you. So that's the, you know, it comes up to the culmination of the Gita there. And then the ending with the, with the fruits, you know, the, the Fala Shruti, the results you get from hearing the Bhagavad Gita too. So wonderful chapter, very powerful indeed, a very powerful chapter with amazing verses. So you should definitely study chapter 18, what to speak of, you know, attaining all these great benefits and blessings have been described here by Lord Shiva. So that's it. That's the, um, the Gita Mahatma. I hope you've enjoyed that and have your rest of your day with lots of peace and lots of love.